Hi, this is Kevin again. I'm really pleased to present my Macedonian army um, of Philip II and Alexander uh, before I became the great. This will probably be a several part series going into uh, first now Philip uh, and then Alexander and then Alexander's reforms and then uh, those of his successors. Um, there's quite a few of them. I'll have uh, army that stretches over five different uh, uh, successor generals, and so those armies are different in their own right. But uh, I think it's it's fitting now that uh, I present this army and why this army is so special, not only to me, but also the impact on the world. You know, you hear a lot about Alexander the Great, but very few people actually talk about his father, Philip, the second of Macedon, and that's where I'm going to focus uh, a bit because this was an unbelievable duo, father-son. The father was the strategist and the creator, and the son was the fearless, very charismatic leader that was able to implement what his father had created. But Philip would actually turn the traditional method of combat on its head uh, by creating an army and, and introducing, I would say, new tactics the likes of which the Greeks had really never seen. Uh, his enemies were no match for, no match for him, uh, and events would prove uh, that neither the Persians, the Bactrians, or the Indians were much of a match either. You know, it's really from Thebes uh, that Philip learned many of the lessons that he applied to the Macedonian army on the field of battle. So while he was hostage there, so Philip was, was, I think he was able to observe, you know, the importance of a close synchronization between the infantry and cavalry, and that a very meticulous planning and speed uh, could ensure victory despite its disadvantages in size and strength. I think most importantly, uh, Philip learned that the best method for decisively defeating the enemy was to attack, attack its strength, not its weakness. And uh, he really was able to learn that from Epidemonitis, uh, which you saw in my earlier um, uh, videos on, on Thebes. What you see here is one of the first things that Philip did was he created what we call a, a pike phalanx. He uh, took not only people that were, were wealthy and aristocratic, but took farmers and craftsmen and formed them into very large, highly trained blocks of soldiers, lightly armored, uh, lightly equipped with a giant 16 to 18 foot pike, uh, we call a sarissa, which was something that the other Greek soldiers didn't have. It was double the length of the standard Greek spear. But uh, this Macedonian phalanx would operate from a spread formation and it was up to five to sometimes six ranks deep. It was stronger, uh, more agile, and it was better trained than any of the other Greek uh, uh, spear blocks and phalanxes. And this would prove instrumental um, for Philip's victories and then, of course, the conquest of Asia by Alexander. And he, Philip designed his army to use this phalanx as a base of maneuver for the cavalry to attack on the flanks. The next thing he did was he formed a group of highly trained men that were basically his uh, royal guard or his foot companions. Uh, those were what we call later the Hypaspis. Highly, highly trained soldiers. They were placed on the right hand side of his battle line and were the elite soldiers. They were basically his version of the Thebian sacred band. Philip also was uh, equally interested in his cavalry arm. So he didn't neglect the cavalry at all, but he created a royal squadron of cavalry that uh, um, attacked in a, what they called a wedge formation. And he was also, I think, uh, the creator of a very fast mounted cavalry scouts that he called the Padromai. So both of those uh, were, were super important for Philip and Alexander. He trained them to attack in a wedge formation and its principal role was to disrupt the opposite line. So the Macedonian horse would push and shove its way through 
and they would actually, with the infantry pinning the enemy to the front, the cavalry would come around the Franks, wreaking havoc among uh, those in front of them, and and come around to 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 the rear, uh, usually on the adversary's flanks or uh, in uh, uh, in the rear. But something that was different that uh, uh, Philip did was that he employed his cavalry to attack first, um, to disrupt the enemy, and then pin it with his infantry, which the Greeks were used to the infantry moving out first, and then the cavalry on the flanks later. Like these beautiful light cavalry here, the Podromai in their scarlet capes, um, his cavalry units, uh, Thracians and various Greek contingency made up a large part of his ability to deliver the punch at the right moment. Philip's uh, use and Alexander's of uh, field artillery was also quite innovative. Uh, their use of light infantry, agrarian javelinmen, Cretan archers, Balearic slingers, um, using them exactly at the right time on the battlefield, really created this combined arms of light infantry, heavy infantry, cavalry, and artillery. And Philip and Alexander used it to conquer the known world at that time. It was innovative and it was devastating. Uh, his son, you know, Alexander, was able to take this army and march all the way to, to the Indus and uh, confront the Indians. Even he had made many, many uh, reforms and changes to the army, of which we'll go into, into next. But uh, I tried to paint the army the way that, that uh, um, I felt it should look. And I think it turned out uh, brilliantly. If uh, you put it all on the table at once, it's quite an impressive uh, force, but I think this right here is a good representation of uh, the colors, uh, the grandeur, and the looks of what Philip of Macedon had created and the army that Alexander used to actually become uh, the master of the known world and Alexander the Great. Uh, just as a side note, uh, this is all 15 millimeter, uh, mostly Zeiston figures. There's a few uh, other companies in there that I had from a long time ago. Most of the shields are hand painted, but there's a few transfers that are thrown in there of, uh, of some really fine work. Uh, the next army is going to be looking at Alexander up to the successors and uh, his generals. Thank you.